Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this simple nourishing flow that's ideal to do when you're on your period. So this is great if you're feeling really bloated, if you have some cramps and just feeling unwell overall with stiffness and tension. This is going to be a simple practice, really grounding. So we're gonna stay close to the earth, mainly through seated poses, as well as a few reclined poses. Um, we're not using any kind of strength today. We're really just gonna take it easy. And today I was supposed to be filming like two power yoga classes and I'm also on my cycle. So there's just absolutely no way that was going to happen. So I'm right there with you guys. And I know that for me, um, it does help to alleviate cramps when I do add a little bit of gentle movement. So we're definitely not trying to push ourselves in any way. We do want to practice some self-care and to slow things down, um, but a little bit of movement can go a long way in alleviating cramps and soreness in our lower back, hips, and lower body overall. So great for all levels, no props required. And we're gonna start seated, just bringing one leg in front of the other. So I have my right shin in front and I'm gonna turn to the side. So right shin in front of the other, and you're just going to fold straight forward. So trying to open up through our lower back and through our hips here, walk your hands out, and you might be up higher here on your forearms, or you might be folding down. And we're really going to emphasize deep belly breaths. And in most of the yoga classes that I teach, I usually encourage that we pull the lower belly in towards the spine whenever we exhale to really engage our lower abdominals. But today we don't want any of that. So really no sucking in whatsoever. Obviously we have extra fluid. It's normal to be bloated. And we want to give ourselves that full permission to just relax our stomachs fully. And there's already enough tension in that area. We don't need to add any more. So breathe deep in and out through your nose. Really letting your abdomen balloon out as you inhale and just relax a little as you exhale. You can push your hands into the floor, slowly start to rise back up. And we'll do that forward fold on the other side. But before we do this, just straighten your right leg out in front of you so that you now have your left foot to the inside of that right thigh. And we're gonna do a passive forward fold. So don't worry about having a straight spine or keeping your right leg really straight. We're just gonna naturally let gravity pull us down. Just starting to open up through the back of our leg and also stretching a little bit more into our low back along the spine. Relax your head, your neck. Just let gravity do the work for you here. Five deep breaths. Push your hands into the floor. Use arm strength to lift yourself back up. And you're gonna open your left knee wider. So instead of having both of my hips and shoulders facing the front of my mat, I'm gonna widen my stance here. So my knees are reaching away from one another. And you can bring your left hand behind you and just reach your right arm up and over, press and lift your pelvis up. Just a nice big counter stretch here. Pushing your hips forward and set them back down. 
And now find a little side bend so you can reach your right hand down your right leg and extend your left arm up and over. And I'm really letting my neck be soft here, relaxing the left shoulder away from your ear. Just a big side body stretch. And let's come all the way back up. So facing the front of your mat again, let's find our seated forward fold. So a variation of Sukhasana or easy pose. This time you have your left shin slightly staggered in front of the right one. Try to sit evenly on both sit bones. And again, relax your stomach. Try not to worry about that here and just focus on lengthening out of your lower back, lengthening through your spine. And then walk your hands forward, finding your best version of this forward fold and just melting into it. Keep the breath flowing in and out through your nose. Our movements really don't need to be intense in order to be effective. And this is a time for us to really connect with ourselves and as much as possible to give ourselves permission to slow way down. Rise on up, take your time. And let's bring our left leg out in front of us. So squared towards the top of the mat, right foot to the inside of your left thigh. And we're just gonna find this passive yin style forward fold. So you can absolutely keep a bit of a bend in your left knee. We're not pushing, we're not pulling. Soften the muscles along your jaw. Relax your shoulders and your arms. Push your hands into the ground, lift on up. And you're gonna widen your legs here so my right knee is gonna move away. facing more so in a diagonal here. Right hand goes behind you, reach your left arm up and over, press and lift your hips up. Nice big counter stretch here. And as you set your hips back down, let's find lateral flexion, just a fancy word for a side bend. So you can slide your left hand down, reach your right arm up and over. trying to create even more space from your right fingertips towards your right shoulder and from your right shoulder to your right hip. Inhale all the way back up and let's face forward, crossing at the ankles, make your way into a tabletop pose on hands and knees, spreading your fingertips wide. And we're just gonna trace some circles with our hips here. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. You can make this as big or as small as you would like. Keep breathing as you do this. And you can reverse the direction of the circles. And coming back through to center, let's find our low lunge. Right foot steps to 
to the top of the mat to keep your right knee anchored and aligned over the top of your ankle. And I'm just going to keep my hands framing my front foot here. Again, making this really passive. So I'm just melting my hips down towards the floor, relaxing my shoulders away from the ears. We're trying to encourage the flow of energy downwards. So really grounding down. And now just go ahead and tuck your back toes under so that you can lift your back knee off the mat. And you might need to come up a little bit higher here, maybe up onto your fingertips. And we're just gonna rock back and forth. And then go ahead and set that back knee down and you can step back into that tabletop pose. From here, keep your knees pretty close in towards one another, rest your hips towards your heels, reach your arms back, and find your little seed child's pose. It's an easy version of Balasana. And you might feel good just rocking your hips a little side to side or finding some stillness. And see if you can breathe into the fullness of your lower back. So really trying to fill up this space above your tailbone, above your sacrum. And letting your lower body or your lower belly inflate and balloon with your breath as a way to support this space a little more. And let's lift on up and we'll find our low lunge on the other side. So back through tabletop and you can step your left foot forward, aligning your knee over your ankle. Feet are about hip width distance apart here. And we're just melting our hips down. Often pain and tension in our lower back comes from having tightness in our hip flexors, so in the front of our thighs and up towards the inner thighs. So low lunges can be really, really effective when we're on our cycle. And you can tuck the back right toes under just to help lift your back knee off the mat. You can just rock a little bit back and forth, using this as an opportunity to stretch into our heel and get into the calf. And instead of going back into a child's pose, from here we'll come into ragdoll. This is the only inversion we're really going to be doing. So you're stepping to the top of the mat and we're not gonna be here very long, but I want you to bend your knees a lot and just let your upper body drape over your legs. Coming into Malasana, our squat, you can turn your heels in and your toes out as you rest your hips down, bending into your knees. And you can bring your hands together at the heart and use your elbows to push your knees open a little bit wider. So especially in this type of pose, I want you to fully relax through your lower belly 
through your pelvis, really feeling that grounding downward energy. Like you could root into the earth. And you can rock onto your seat. We're gonna lower all the way down onto our backs. So just gently make your way there and pull your knees in towards your belly. And you might rock a little side to side as a way to massage your lower back. You can bring your feet flat to the floor. We'll take our reclined pigeon pose, just getting deeper into our glutes and outer hips. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee, and you can reach through with your arms, pulling that left thigh in towards your chest. And I'm intending or thinking about reaching my right knee away from me to really go deeper into that glute. Try to relax your shoulders, your head, and your upper back as much as possible. You're just using a little bit of arm strength to find the right amount of support to get the stretch, but we're not overstraining ourselves. And you can keep the figure four shape, but just let your left foot come back down to the mat and then grab a hold of your big right toe with your two piece fingers and we'll find our half happy baby pose, variation of Ananda Balasana. So my elbow is to the inside of my knee and I'm pushing it wider and I'm letting my left thigh kind of flop over to the side to provide a little bit of a counterweight. And as I'm pulling my right thigh and right knee down, I just like to bring my left hand right over my lower belly If you'd like to do a slightly more intense variation of this pose, just a deeper stretch, you can also straighten your left leg. But remember, this is meant to be a nourishing practice. So if that's too much for you, keep your left knee bent. Just honor your body exactly where it is. We're gonna bend our right knee. If you had your left knee still bent, let's all straighten the left leg. And we can carry into a twist by bringing our right thigh across the body over to the left, maybe with your left hand kind of guiding that knee down and reaching your right arm out to the side. So my right shoulder is trying to move as far away from my right hip as possible. here in the pose. And let's make our way back through to center and just pull both knees into your belly again. Maybe rocking feeling into your body. 
Let's find a reclined pigeon on the other side. So both feet come flat to the floor and you can cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee, flexing and reaching that knee back. And you can reach through and pull your right leg in towards you. See if you can melt your shoulders into the ground a little more. Getting even heavier. And we'll find our half happy baby pose. So you can let your right foot come back to the floor. Grab a hold of your big left toe with your two left peace fingers. And you're gonna widen your right knee towards your right shoulder. You can let your right thigh flop over a little bit to provide that counterweight. And maybe place your right hand right above that womb space. Just trying to send a little bit of that healing energy. I find just even the warmth of my palm to feel really nice, especially when I am having very uncomfortable cramps. And if you did it on the first side, you can also straighten your right leg here. But if it makes you contract and tense up, just let that go and keep your right knee bent instead. Deep belly breath and we'll bend our left knee, straighten your right leg if you didn't have that already and we'll find a twist so cross that left thigh over your body towards the right. Extend your left arm out to the side, press that left shoulder blade into the floor. So even though we're kind of constricting our lower belly here with this twist, keep trying to inflate your lower belly with your breath. And let's come all the way back to center. And one last time, we'll pull our knees in towards us, giving a big squeeze. And we'll spend a few minutes in Shavasana, full body relaxation. Depending on how your lower back is feeling, it might not be comfortable for you to have your legs straight out. If you feel like that's too much, you can keep your knees falling in towards one another with your feet flat on the floor. That's actually what I'm going to do for Shavasana for myself. 
and I'm going to place my hands taking Yoni Mudra, which is thumbs together, index fingers together, and placing that directly over my lower belly, over the pelvis, just to bring a little bit more energy here and to focus my awareness on this space. You can do this with your legs out straight or your knees bent. And try to fully relax your facial muscles so you're not straining in any part of your body. And really tune in. Notice what your body might be trying to tell you. getting really quiet internally so that you can practice deep listening to see what you might need in this moment. And we'll take a few minutes here before closing our practice together. Just breathing and listening. If you had your legs straight out in the traditional form of Shavasana, you can bend your knees one at a time so the feet are flat to the floor. And from here, we're just going to drop our knees side to side in a windshield wiper motion. You can flex your feet here so that you're rolling over your heels, just dropping side to side.
Um, pulling your knees in. Might feel good to stretch your arms up overhead. Lengthen out. And let's turn to one side. Take a little fetal pose. Marking this time of transition. Push into the floor in order to lift up. Come to take a seat. And let's just bring our hands to the low belly. Notice how you feel right now. Hands together at the front of our hearts. Let's close by chanting Om one time. We'll inhale to chant. Big breath in. Om. Namaste. Thank you so very much for doing this practice with me. I hope you feel a little better now as opposed to when you first stepped onto your mat. I know I certainly feel a little bit better, but please do honor yourself for the rest of the day and over the next few days by just giving yourself permission to slow down and take breaks whenever you can and to practice a little bit more compassion and self-care for yourself and remind yourself not to suck in and to just relax. I know that that's certainly something that I am guilty of and especially when we are on our periods it's just really good to just soften fully and wear comfortable clothes. Okay that's all for now. Please subscribe and I hope you'll practice again with me very soon.